22nd, 1999. We're here today at the Brittany Convalescent Home interviewing Mr. Thomas Smith. This interview is a continuation of our Veterans Oral History Project. Good morning, Tom. How are you? Good, thanks. Good. Can I ask you a few questions? How old are you? 72. You're 72 years old. And how long have you resided here at Brittany? Since uh, November 11th, 1981. Okay. And you were married before? Yes. And you have children? Three. Three children? Their names? Excuse me? What are their names? Ta uh, Thomas E. Jr., Tara Ann, and Linda Patricia. And I understand you have grandchildren? Huh? How many grandchildren? Six. Six. Where were you born? Born in Brockton, Mass. And you were raised in Brockton? Yes. What was it like living in Brockton when you were a young boy? What? What do you remember about living in Brockton as a young boy? I had a wonderful life, wonderful education. Where? Wonderful superintendent, Edward Nelson. He was marvelous. At Brockton schools? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you have brothers and sisters? Yeah. How many? What? How many brothers and sisters? Two brothers, John, a na retired naval captain, James, a retired deputy chief of the fire department in Brockton, and Patricia, a retired physical... Physical therapist? Physical training, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And what did your father do? What? When you were younger, did your father work in Brockton? My father was a pharmacist. He died uh, December 10th, 1939, when I was 12 years old. My brother was 14, and my youngest brother was 10, and my sister was 7. And your sister was 7 years my old? My mother brought us all up. She did a marvelous job. Did she work outside of the home? Your did mother? she work, your mother? My mother? Mm. She went to work after we got in junior high. And what did she do? She was a secretary. And she raised all of you all without... All of us, all marvelous. When did you decide to enter the military? What? Why and when did you decide to enter the military? Retire, uh, no. graduate. Uh, did you graduate from high school? Brockton schools. Brockton High School? I left Brockton schools in February 12, 1945. And then what did you do? Went into the Navy. Why? Because I didn't want to get drafted. I hated guns. Tell me about that. Why did you hate guns? Well, my, when I was eight, my mother brought me a BB gun. And we used it to practice shooting downstairs in the cellar. And then one day, I met two brothers down in the playground. And they said to me, come on, we'll take you hunting. So I thought they were just fooling around. I went with them. I saw them shoot down a beautiful cardinal and a bluebird. Oh, that was it. I threw the gun in the river. Yeah, and never again. I hated guns. So even though you wanted to enter the military, you didn't want to have anything to do with guns, so you entered the Navy? Navy. Mm -hmm. U.S. Navy. And? Because I felt that if I was drafted, I'd have to go in the Army. Uh -huh. and bear a gun. So how old were you when you entered the Navy? How old? When I enlisted, 17. Where did you go for your basic training? I can't for the life of me remember where I took my boot camp. It was in New York. In New York? After I finished boot camp, I came home for 10 days, and then I had to go back to the, the area, the naval base. And this lieutenant, uh, when I got back there, this lieutenant colonel, lieutenant uh, commander, interviewed me and asked me what I'd like to do in the Navy. I told him I'd like to go to Annapolis. He says, all right, we'll have to get you a summer job. <laughs> so I told him, uh, 
asked him if he had a job for a lifeguard, and he said, yeah, I had an officer's pool. So he gave me that job. I had to wait until September. So when the morning came in mid-June when I uh, was to start work, I felt terrible. I felt awful. I never felt like that before. So I was sleeping in a bunk. I got out of the bunk about 12 o'clock. I had to be the at work at 1. I got up, started to go to work. I got halfway to work. It wasn't too far. I said, no, oh, I can't go. I got to go to sick bay. So I went to sick bay, told him the problem. He examined me. They wished me right over to the Naval Hospital. Gave me some medicine, I fell asleep. When I woke up, I couldn't move my legs. So I just yelled, help. They came, I told them, I can't move my legs, I'm paralyzed. In a matter of moments, I was in the larger hospital. And that's when they brought me back from polio. You had polio? Yeah, on both legs. How long were you in the hospital for? Penicillin. I was in the hospital for six months. And they helped you to recuperate? Huh? They helped you to get better and recuperate from polio? Well, I thought, I, thought uh, I was going to get discharged. The war was over. I was in a, uh, a room August 14th, about 4.30, when we heard the president announce the war was over, that Japan had surrendered. So in late November, I, went, I had to go before a medical board, three officers, and they said to me, what do you plan to do? I said, I plan on going home, being discharged, going home, and going to Holy Cross College. And one stood up and said, oh no, you're going to see. So the next thing I knew, I picked up the USS Independence in Portland, Oregon. We went from Portland, Oregon, to Long Beach, California, and I got seasick. What an experience. All they did was hang over the rail. But that passed. And from Long Beach, we went uh, I, on board the Independence. I, the ship was used to bring troops back from the Pacific. At that point in time, were you able to walk without difficulty? What? Were you able to walk without oh, difficulty? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So your medical care was, yeah. how, did, how do you feel you, you were treated medically while you were in the hospital? No. You were treated well? The only well? thing else that happened in the service, I was laying, we were out to sea. Mm -hmm. And I was laying on the uh, flight deck. Planes used to take off and come in. Getting a suntan. Saturday morning, I'll never forget it. And all of a sudden there was a bump in the ship and the ship rocked. So I stood up and I looked and down is the uh, oil tanker going to refuel the ship. And on it is this guy in a beautiful tan. He looked like a Greek god. His hair was gold. His skin and hair was gold. And he was winding up and he threw this rope. Next thing I knew, clunk, right down. Sick pay for three days. There was a monkey's fist about the size of this. Hit me right here. Now a monkey fist was part of a knot yeah, they, in the rope? Yeah, that's what they used to get the ship tied together. So out of that came a 10% discount for hearing. Service-connected disability for hearing in this year. So that was that. How long were you on the USS Independence? I was on the USS Independence 
until it blew up in the atomic bomb underwater sea explosion in July, uh, June or July of 46, off Bikini Atoll. Tell us about that whole experience. When you were leaving Long Beach, did you know where you were going? What? When you were leaving Long Beach on the ship, did you know no, where you were going? the ship was docked in, uh, there were about 200 ships, mm -hmm. all docked, anchored, mm -hmm. and they were going to blow the uh, atomic bomb up and see what effect it would have on the ships. And so the mining came that just that uh, we were on the USS Rockwell now, uh, we transferred. They only took a, uh, a slight crew out from uh, Hawaii, Honolulu, to uh, where Bikini Atoll. <coughs> and then they, uh, we were on the deck of the Rockwell. We had to turn our backs from the direction of where it was going to be blow up. It was about 10 o'clock in the morning, and after it blew up, they turned us around. What a beautiful sight. The most beautiful colors I had ever seen in my life. Amazing. And then came the rotten black element. What a, what a, what a moment, wow. Tom, did you know that they were going to do this beforehand? Oh, they know they notified uh, the ship uh, in January, and you could volunteer. You didn't have to go; you could volunteer. So I volunteered. Why? I thought it'd be an experience. Mm -hmm. Ten days after we went in, while well, we went through the Independence, there was a wreck, rift, terrible. <coughs> what a sight! And then after that, it was back to uh, Hawaii. And we worked, we had to work, uh, Jay Hyatt and I, he was aboard the Independence, we had to work uh, getting men uh, dis discharged. And then we came back to S uh, San Diego and I was discharged then September 26, 1946. Did you keep in touch with some of the friends that you made on the ship? Huh? Did you keep in touch with friends after? I stayed in San Diego for two days. Then I took uh, a Navy plane home from uh, the Naval Air Base. When we got home, the Massachusetts was offering veterans 52 weeks of twenty dollars a week and twenty dollars a week was a lot of money yeah yeah so how long did you did you take in that money for those full 52 I, weeks i only stayed under the 52 20 for about two months mm -hmm. and i went to my mother and i told her i have to go to work so she called the brother he had a top job in the brock and edison so i went so he got me a job i went as a lumper uh, dig post holes, crunch. And I worked my way up to the, uh, high lines truck. You know the lines that go through the woods? Yes. Big tall ones. That was an experience. And then I decided to go to college. There was a fellow, Edward Hammond, his name was, he was older, at the Edison Company, came from Hanover. He was always after me to go to school. So he finally persuaded me. And where did you go? Huh? Where did you go to school? Well, uh, I was <laughs> going to go to Northeastern on a scholar, uh, athletic scholarship. But then this father of a girlfriend who was a classmate, she was an actual girlfriend, she was just a friend. He came and talked to me for two hours one Sunday night to go to BC, told me his friend, the Jewish owner of the company he worked for, wanted me to go to BC. Imagine it. Because you were a good athlete? Yeah. In what sports? Football, basketball, baseball. Did you get a scholarship to go there? No, I went to BC on the uh, 
I tried to get a scholarship, but uh, the athletic director wouldn't agree to uh, room and board for the football, so I couldn't see going home late from football. I had no car, so I just forgot. It. I went out my senior year, but I left too much. So did you go on the GI Bill also? Did the GI Bill help you at college? GI Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. The last semester I had to pay for it, so I drove cab nights. It was worth it. And you played sports while you were there. You played sports I while... I gave up sports and you did. up till I was 35. After I was 35, I gave them up. Mm -hmm. Now, after college, what did you do? After college, mm -hmm. I went to California for two years, taught in Colts and came back, ended up in Southboro. Were you a teacher in Southboro? Southboro, five years. I was teacher and coach of basketball and baseball. We had great success those five years. The superintendent of schools, we were going into a regional high school in 59. He wouldn't give me a, a coaching job. I thought I had worked the Northboro coach every year. Were there in Northboro, Southboro Regional. <coughs> and when we were going to a tournament, the last tournament, I called the boys together. There were 15 boys, but only 12 could go. So I told them, if any of you miss practice and you don't bring an open your parents as to why you miss, you don't go. Sure enough, the first day, the superintendent's son doesn't appear. I look out the window. And there he's walking down the street with his girl, out in the road. Next day he came in, he didn't bring a note. I told him, turn in your stuff. I gave the job to another kid. So when it came time for jobs in the new school, I bumped into his father in the spring, after the season was over and everything. I asked if I was going to the regional students. They're all the Varsity coaching jobs are filled. If you want to do JVs, the freshmen see John. John Ryan was the so and the father of the kid I'd had since he was in the eighth grade, played center, heard it. He was vice president at Babson in Wildley. Mm -hmm. So he brought me into Babson as the uh, first permanent athletic director. Yeah, it was a nice job. Love being in Wellesley because that's such a terrific school system. Yeah. Mm. Last thing the director of education at BC said to me, if you ever get married and you want your kids to get a great education, live in Wellesley mm -hmm. because they were taught then. Mm -hmm. That was in 52. I got there seven years later. so. We I spent seven years there and decided to go back into teaching, and just uh -huh. taught uh -huh. at Brockton High. At Brockton High School you taught. For how long? What? For how long? Uh, I came to Brockton in 1966. I spent four years in the old high school. They had so many p kids to go to school there on double shifts. Uh -huh. And then they had a brand new high school, the largest high school east of the Mississippi. I stayed there from 70 to 81. Did you retire from teaching in 1981? Uh, I was teaching and a floor teacher. I had charge of the, uh, the central building, charge of the Johns, push, chasing drugs and smokers, drug users, abusers and, and smokers. So then I, in 81, I had eight days of I couldn't sleep, day and night. So I called my daughter, Tara, she lives in Natick. I told her to call the family doctor, Dr. Doobie. So she called him and he said, bring him to the hospital. So she came over that Friday afternoon, took me to her house, brought me the uh, 
back uh, uh, to the hospital, Newton Wellesley Hospital, Sunday morning. Monday morning at 12 noon, the doctor walks in with another doctor with him. He says to me, Tom, retire or die. He walks out. And the doctor he left to, was a psychiatrist. He left to talk to me about retiring and what it meant. And blah, blah, blah. Retire or die, I, I did, never doubted him. I just retired. How old were you at that time, approximately? 81. Fifty-four. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He is caught up. Mm -hmm. Getting back to the your Navy experiences, were you able to stay in contact with some of your friends that you met in the what? Navy? Were you able to stay in contact with any of your Navy friends? That Navy. You, yeah, the people that you met when you were in the Navy. Did you stay in contact with any of them? Been a long time with the Navy. Now, once you left the Navy, yes. did you stay in contact with any of the men that you met? No. You didn't? No. no. Do you think it was important for you to be in the Navy? The one thing I remember that was greatest about the Navy was the cleanliness. Mm -hmm. They marked cleanliness. That was a virtue. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the one thing I remember. Do you think being in the Navy, Navy helped you as you got older and went into teaching? Did anything? Well, any my brother was a naval captain. He was. So I was always tied in with him. Mm -hmm. so. Did he see war also? Oh yeah, oh mm -hmm. yeah, he saw it. He, he saw it uh, first with. Uh, he went to graduate from. Uh, uh, the college in Hyannis, Maritime. And Mass he Maritime. worked with the Maritime. Mm -hmm. And then when he went out, when he got out, when I came home, he was working at the White Star Laundry as a as a uh, engineer. So one Sunday morning, his wife called the house and talked to my mother, wanted to know if I'd bring him down his lunch. So I said, sure. So I walked down the house and got the lunch, then went down. Worked my way in from the back door. Found the engine room, and there he's working on a burner. Cut the door open, and I yelled in, the Audi comes covered from head to foot black. I told him, you're crazy. Join the Navy, which he did. He did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the questions that we ask a lot of our veterans. You'll have to speak. OK, up. one of the questions that we ask veterans that I'd like to ask you, do you feel that there was a difference of opinion regarding your generation of veterans and those who served in Korea and those who served in Vietnam. Well, I wasn't interested in reserve. Mm -hmm. No, I never. Do you think there was a uh, that that the veterans were treated differently no. though during your generation? I'm a member of uh, the DAV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're very good. Okay. Would you like to say one other thing during this interview that will be taped about your experience or about how important you think it was to be a part of the service to your country? Well, being a part of what time is no fun for anybody. Mm -hmm. I contributed. I made my part. I did the best I could. Mm -hmm. I never saw a gun. The only time I saw guns was when I was in... Uh, the surroundings that we shot the big guns off, mm -hmm. 16 millimeters. <coughs> That's the only experience I have with guns. And during that time, did you f did you sense fear or no. no? No, I didn't have the gun in the hand. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got to get upstairs. Okay. We'd like to thank you for You're this welcome. interview today. Oh. Okay.